Step into a world where innovation meets sustainability with the stunning $3.96 billion China floating solar fish farm, leaving Europe astonished and paving the way for a brighter, fish-friendlier energy revolution. The world's largest floating solar power station, showcasing an astonishing installation of 600,000 photovoltaic panels on water, was built as a consequence of China's remarkable investment of $890 million. An incredible 600 million kilowatt hours of annual power can now be produced thanks to this groundbreaking project. This combined development paradigm, which combines the fields of fisheries and power generation, has achieved great success. The power plant makes use of the solar panel's capacity to capture energy, while also cultivating a big population of fish underneath to support a vibrant aquatic ecology. As a result, this innovative project not only helps the locals in the area who are experiencing an electricity crisis, but it also revitalizes the local villagers' economy by fostering prosperous aquaculture practices. China's green and low-carbon development is facilitated by the rise of clean energy projects. With 1.4 billion people, China never has a problem with a lack of electricity, not even in the sweltering summer. In stark contrast to their European counterparts, it is remarkable that the Chinese have the luxury of low electricity expenses. Chinese consumers only spend 8 cents per kilowatt hour, compared to European customers who pay a high 0.7 euros. Europe as a whole is affected by the fact that China's electricity costs are more than 10 times lower than those in Europe. China's extensive network of power plants is to blame for this stark discrepancy. Let's investigate the factors that have prevented Europe from enthusiastically embracing solar photovoltaic power plants at this time. Understanding the size of a fantastic power facility in Shandong, China is essential before we delve any deeper into the topic. This enormous floating photovoltaic power facility covers an area of more than 7,000 square kilometers and is expected to start operating in 2023. Over 8,000 photovoltaic panels, totaling more than 600,000, are presented over 81 matrices that make up the system. Surprisingly, this massive power plant has the ability to produce an astounding 600 million kilowatt hours of clean electricity every year. What potential economic impact will it have on such a large scale? The development of floating photovoltaic? We will see it shortly. The completion of the power plant will not only have a positive impact, but will also help China reach its target of having no carbon emissions. The power plant is essential in preventing climate change since it reduces carbon dioxide emissions by an astounding 453,000 tons and saves an amazing 168,000 tons of coal locally. The three-dimensional utilization of the reservoir by the water photovoltaic power station, which results in the preservation of roughly 8,000 mu of construction area, is one of the power plant's significant advantages. Additionally, it successfully reduces water evaporation, which enhances economic gains. China has cleverly linked the power plant with wind power, leading to the construction of a new energy comprehensive demonstration base, in recognition of the need of integrating renewable energy sources. The success of desert solar power stations is reflected in China's creative approach to the development of floating photovoltaic power plants. These two endeavors offer mutually beneficial outcomes. For instance, the desert solar power plant makes use of photovoltaic solar panels to turn arid deserts into lush oases that can support agricultural products. The floating photovoltaic power plant also embraces aquaculture in addition to power generation, enhancing its ability to serve a variety of purposes. China has dedicated itself to creating new villages for nearly 50 years, and one specific effort has given rural areas a new lease on life. Thousands of farmers are now enjoying higher living conditions without having to relocate because the project has boosted local economies and stimulated economic growth. Before we proceed further and analyze why China is expanding its alternative energy resources instead, it already has plenty of electricity to fulfill its needs easily. Make sure that you have hit the like and subscribe button to get instant alerts of newly uploaded videos. Now let's continue. Some people might be puzzled by China's continued power plant expansion. China already has enough electricity, right? The development of the nation's industrial sector during the previous two decades holds the key to the solution. Due to the underdevelopment of alternative energy sources during this time, China relied significantly on coal for its power generation. Unfortunately, this strategy resulted in significant pollution, which increased urban smog, global warming, and ecological harm. 
The United Nations Climate Panel suggested in 2020 that China aim for zero carbon dioxide emissions in recognition of the urgent need for change. China agreed to become carbon neutral by 2060 in response to international pressure. The pledge demonstrates China's commitment to tackling climate change. Fortunately, China's transition to cleaner energy has made great strides in recent years. The area is now dotted with enormous hydropower and desert power plants. Notably, China has surpassed 400 million kilowatt of grid-connected solar installations in just seven years, making it a global leader in the production of photovoltaic energy. China now holds the top spot in global efforts to reduce carbon emissions thanks to this outstanding accomplishment. Why does Europe not support the construction of photovoltaic power plants fully? It's fascinating to consider that French scientists first identified this renewable energy source's potential in 1839. Technology had not advanced much at that time, and Europe and Russia had a solid energy alliance that guaranteed a continuous supply of energy, without having to worry about power shortages or global warming. Due to this, Europe's tremendous photovoltaic potential was largely unrealized until the 1970s oil crisis. Europe was at the forefront of industry and employment development, but while it worked to grow its economy, it had to contend with the unpleasant reality of pollution. Only then did the continent start to change its emphasis to renewable energy, progressively integrating solar power plants into daily life. The development of solar power plants in Europe has slowed down despite 50 years of advancement. The emergence of extreme environmentalism and worries about the availability of human resources are two major obstacles to the development of clean energy in Europe. Greenland is one of the main areas of attention for the European Union when it comes to ecological protection. Large land tracts, which Europe lacks compared to big nations like China, are necessary for the building of photovoltaic power stations. In order to prevent the development of photovoltaic power plants in newly developed green spaces, the European Union has put into place a policy that limits their construction to previously industrialized land. Since there aren't many locations available, this restriction presents a problem for developers. As a result, the price of active industries, closed mine shafts, and other formerly used areas has risen. Environmentalists contend that the ecological environment must be protected, notwithstanding the government's belief in the significance of increasing renewable energy. The result in opposition to the construction of solar power plants has halted their development throughout Europe. This situation puts Europe in a precarious position as it tries to meet the everyday electricity needs of its citizens during energy shortages. A major obstacle to ensure that the continent has a consistent supply of energy is the lack of progress in developing photovoltaic power facilities. The excessive environmental protection that environmentalists promote has several inconsistencies. While their unshakable commitment was crucial in protecting ecosystems and foster cleaner settings, it unintentionally hampered the growth of clean energy in European nations. As a result, they are caught up in a power crisis as Europe is subject to Russian sanctions and pays expensive rates for natural gas imported from the United States. This strategy falls short of promoting a win-win resolution. Europe must strive for a healthy balance between environmental preservation and the development of sustainable energy projects if it is to independently handle its power crisis. In order to achieve a win-win situation and accelerate the growth of power across the continent, Europe must integrate these two goals. Furthermore, establishing large-scale solar power facilities requires a lot of labor, and a major barrier is a lack of laborers. Currently, a number of European nations are experiencing energy shortages as a result of Europe's unilateral withdrawal from Russia's natural gas. They are in a crucial period as winter draws closer. If the availability of energy is threatened, it is likely that European citizens would experience a particularly difficult winter. China, in contrast, assists other countries in creating their own clean energy power plants in addition to building numerous ones within its own boundaries. Now, it is common to see Chinese solar power plants in Malaysia, Qatar, Egypt, Africa, and other nations. Power shortages in many areas have been successfully handled by China's inspirational One Belt, One Road power station plan improving the standard of living for countless people. With the construction of photovoltaic power plants, these countries are no longer dependent on importing energy from the U.S. at exorbitant prices. This strategy is a perfect example of a win-win situation. In fact, it could take a nation a full year or even half a year to start building solar photovoltaic power plants. However, the returns on such investments far exceed the initial outlay. So, here's an intriguing question. 
How can other countries learn from China's successful model and forge their own path towards energy self-sufficiency? Share your thoughts in the comments section and stay tuned for the upcoming videos.